Well, I, uh, <clears throat> I pray that everyone can hear me. I cannot hear myself. Um, let's see if there's any kind of sound coming through on uh, maybe another page here. Pull it up and just check it out. We are live. I want to welcome everybody joining us here tonight. Uh, this is a little bit <clears throat> different. Hello, Brother Jimmy. I hope you're having a good day. The good news is, Jimmy, that um, my son found uh, which one of the switches was not working. And uh, he uh, was able to uh, fiddle with it. And so the lawnmower is running, praise God. So we can thank God, Jimmy, the lawnmower is running. <laughs> praise the Lord. Uh, got a little bit of a lag. I guess that lag might be because Facebook is, uh, <clears throat> their algorithm is uh, checking everything out to make sure everything is uh, kosher. It's... Uh, it's a blessing to be able to use the Facebook Live, but the Facebook Live also comes with the uh, potential to be censored. So we praise God. Uh, we want you to like and share. Please like and share the video. Uh, share it on your page. Share it on any other pages that you think it might uh, be a good idea to have it on. Uh, invite other friends. You can have a watch party and you can invite other friends to join us. I'm uh, in my living room tonight rather than in the office because it's very, very hot today and I did not get the air conditioner on early enough so uh, the building would just be way, way, way too hot for me to go in today. So I'm here in my living room. So welcome. We praise God for your uh, joining us, and uh, we hope uh, that God will bless our time together. I want to ask everybody a question. Uh, maybe you'll uh, respond here. Uh, the, uh, the new way of doing things, maybe I can add a question here and see how it works, because uh, I've never done this before. How has God moved in your life during the pandemic. I think that's it. I don't know if that if that's actually going to go on there. I don't I don't know, but anyway. How has how has God moved in your life in the pandemic uh, if you have seen anything? Uh, Oh, I see. It, it put the it put the question up here in the uh, picture box. How many can see that? Give me a little heads up. Or uh, hello, Sister Lopez. Praise God for you. God bless you too. Uh, I don't know. It says oh, your yeah. your your public profile message will be shared. Huh? I can see it. So you can see it. So. Uh, if you can see it, maybe you can answer it. How has God moved in your life during the pandemic? Um, we, uh, we just want to take this time to thank God for uh, the, 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 uh, the care, uh, the blessings, the watchfulness that he has had over us. Um, because... There are many uh, to our left and many to our right that are having issues. Uh, and of course, it has affected our lives uh, in many ways. <clears throat> so Jimmy's posting that he just got back from the hospital. Well, Jimmy, I pray that uh, everything is all right with you. I pray you're all right. I pray that uh, you got a good bill of health, at least I'm hoping. 
Uh, you know, you can pray for Jimmy and his diabetes and uh, just for God to give him some good health. You know, there's a lot of, of issues that are going on in people's lives right now. And uh, we, we all need prayer and we all need uh, God's blessing and care during this time. Um, let's see, who was it? Who else was it that I heard that needed prayer today? Uh, little Lee needs prayer. Okay, Lord, we we pray for Jimmy, Lord, and we pray for Little Lee that you touch both their bodies and bless them today, Lord. Heal them, deliver them, give them good health, Lord. Protect us, Lord, from the COVID, Lord. Protect your people from this COVID. In Jesus' name, Lord. Keep us healthy. Keep our immune systems well. Um, but there was someone else that, that came to my mind, and I, and I just can't, can't remember who that was that needed prayer today. wanted to uh, share some thoughts uh, with you about King David. You know, when we think of King David, um, one of the things that, King, that comes to, to our mind is what God's Word says about him. That he was, uh, he was faithful in his generations. Uh, I believe that's found, let's see here. Is that found up here? In, yeah, in Acts, the 13th chapter and the 36th verse, it says, For when David had served God's purpose in his own generation. Wouldn't that be awesome if God would say that about you, that you served his purpose for your generation? That for your generation, you, you did what God expected you to do. Uh, David endured all the different problems in his generation. He endured all the attacks in his generation. And he endured all the, uh, the defeats in his gener generation. Yet God said he served his purposes. David was an influencer of other people. When the Bible says you're the light of the world, that means that you're an influencer. Uh, light guides, uh, light make, makes things grow, uh, light influences. David was that kind of a beacon. He, he influenced his family, he influenced his neighbors, he influenced people around him, he influenced hundreds, he influenced thousands. But there's also another thing about David is that even his negativity influenced people. So there were some times when he influenced people the wrong way, not the right way. So praise God, you know, we, we need to be, we need to be careful. We need to really be careful because even in our negative ways, we can influence other people. Whether we want to or not, we can. Sister Lopez says she's going tomorrow for texting. I believe she means testing. Uh, sometimes autocorrect uh, corrects whatever we're speaking into the phone and says something else. So let's pray for Sister Lopez that her tests will be positive. I mean, will be negative and that she'll be fine. So let's just take a moment and pray. Lord, we just pray for Sister Lopez that her testing tomorrow will be negative and that she will be fine and she'll be well and she'll be blessed. Lord, Put your hand on Sister Lopez and bless her in Jesus' name. Uh, a couple of things that David was faithful in is that David was faithful in obeying his father. You know, we can say a lot about David, him being the son that was forgotten, the one that was overlooked. Uh, but he spent a lot of time playing his harp with God. 
he spent a lot of time alone with God. Uh, and, and during that time period, he grew close to God. And he understood that his relationship with his father, you know, a lot of times we, we don't have, we, we might say, well, my father's this, my father's that, so I'm not going to obey him. David's father was not necessarily the best father that, that David could have had, but David obeyed his father. He didn't argue with him. He didn't, can you imagine his dad telling him, now, I want you to take this, uh, this food and go go see your brothers and David could have said yeah but I'm the king I've been anointed king you don't send me to do this get somebody else to do this but David does not do that David obeys his father because he understands the principle of obedience he understands the importance of staying in right relationship with the people in your life we're all going to be tested we're going to be tested in the natural things of this life. Uh, even Jesus was tested. And the Bible says that he was faithful in his testing. Uh, there's a lot of people that go on and talk about this uh, pandemic and this COVID. And, and there's a lot of views and opinions about it. But one of the things I can tell you is that God is watching how we deal with it. He's watching how we react to it, how we function in it. If we, if we use wisdom, if we seek his face, if, uh, if we do things that uh, uh, will bring forth the best outcome, or if we're just going to do whatever we want to do. You know, some people, they say, well, you know, I'm going to do this and that because I have faith. And, and I hope that it is faith and not recklessness. I hope people just don't be careless uh, because it's easy for us to do that. It's easy for us to just get off and, you know, just start doing things the way we want to do them or, or do things because we feel like, hey, I'm not, nobody's going to tell me what to do or how to do it. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of conflicts. There's all kinds of opinions and viewpoints. Um, uh, I saw yesterday where Andy Stanley is not going to have church in a public gathering until next year. Do you know how many people blasted him for that? Saying he, he was not a good pastor or he was a false teacher or all kinds of things. And all he was saying is that for us to be able to follow the regulations, you know, we have thousands of people that come to our building. For us to be able to follow the regulations when you're talking about thousands of people that are coming together, they're all going to have to be six foot apart. We're all going to have to uh, uh, sanitize everything. He said it's just not possible. It's just not practical for us to be able to do all that it would be required. And, and, and so I think that, you know, in his situation, he made a good decision. However, other people... Are upset they think they think man this, you just ought to go ahead and have service and don't don't worry about what they're saying and that may be true you know maybe maybe God would you would say that God told you to do that that's okay that's all right if you believe that God has told you to do that but please don't don't be presumptuous because the Bible says deliver me from the sin of presumption so make sure that you're sure that God's telling you to do that. And it's not just that you want to somehow prove something, whatever that is. Listen, I, I want to get back in the building too. I want to be able to bring everybody together too. I, I want to be able to go to church on Sunday and worship together with the congregation. But like... Uh, one of my pastor friends said, if, if you go into some of the church bathrooms after a service and you look at those bathrooms, he's, he said, now just, just imagine you're going to put your faith in those people to sanitize that bathroom. You know, you know how people are. You know how Christian people, too, just as much as unbelievers, they're not necessarily the cleanest people. 
Uh, I remember one of the men that uh, used to help us here at the church. He used to say, the hardest thing to do here is to clean these bathrooms after people have left. Now, to make sure all that's sanitized and all that is clean and all that is, you know, germ-free, it's a lot of work. And so <clears throat> the reality is, is that I think uh, all the churches are, are going to go slow. Uh, we might, by the end of December, uh, some people say, well, COVID's going to disappear in November. Maybe it will. I don't know. But we might come to the place where they either find uh, a vaccine and people start getting vaccinated, which then lowers the risk. We might find out by the end of the year that uh, uh, the uh, amount of people that have tested positive brings us to that herd immunity. When you hit that 80% herd immunity, then the risk of 20% is so low. It's so low. But the, the thing is, is that we're being tested in the natural. We're being tested. We, we want to be faithful to God. We want to, uh, to do what he's leading us to do. But we need to be faithful also in the fact that we're, we are in a world, a sinful world. We're in a world that is filled with ungodliness, filled with unbelievers. And this world is a world that is not, it's not heading, it's not heading for the best things, it's heading for the end. And so there is even a possibility that all these things could get worse. Where is our faith? Is our faith in a church building? Is our faith in gathering? Or is our faith in the almighty God who can do what is impossible? We may uh, begin to meet uh, outdoors. We may begin to meet in places uh, in secret. Those are all possibilities that could happen in the future. Are we able to be adaptable to that? That's a question we need to ask. Can I adapt to the world that I live in and still worship God? Or, or do I, uh, or am I, that's not do I, but am I stuck in only one thing? I heard uh, a pastor say the other day, uh, maybe all of us should rethink the whole church thing anyway. Maybe we should just look at the entire process and rethink it. For sure, this is a time for us to evaluate everything and to think about everything and to ask God about all of this. What should we do, Lord? What should we do? I, I watched a person's testimony the other day. And he was talking about how God had used his mother to influence him. And, and in this testimony, he said that... Let me move my camera just a little bit. No, that was too much. Okay. Oh, well. Anyway. He said that uh, his mother kept encouraging him to read his Bible, to stay connected with God. And he had lost uh, a couple of jobs that he was hoping would come open, but it didn't work. And he actually lost the jobs. In the process of losing those jobs, he, uh, he began to get behind in some of his bills. And so he noticed that he got a letter in the mail that said his rent was due. And he called his mother up and he said, Mother, you know, I know that you've always been helping me and I, I, I don't want to bother you, but I'm, I'm in need 
uh, my job has not come through and my rent's due and I don't have the money. She said, son, have you been reading your Bible? He said, mother, I haven't had time to read the Bible. She said, well, when you read, read the Bible, get back to me. Okay, son? So he went on his way and did what he did for those 30 days and didn't get a job and didn't get any money and the rent came due again. And so he called up his mother and he said, Mother, he said, I'm two months behind now. And I'm, I'm worried about it. I'm concerned. She said, have you been reading your Bible? And he said, no, Mother, I, I haven't been reading the Bible. I'll be honest with you, I haven't. She said, well, when you read the Bible, get back to me, okay, son? He said, but Mother, I need some help. She said, well, when you read the Bible, get back to me. So he said, all right. He went on, and then a whole another 30 days passed. No job, no work. The letter now says, you're going to be kicked out. We're going to, we're go we're going to evict you unless we get the three months rent. He called his mother up, and he said, Mom, I really don't know what else to do. I'm, I'm really up a creek without a paddle. I can't get any of these contracts to go through. I don't have any money coming in. And I'm three months behind and they said I'm, they're going to evict me. She said, son, have you read your Bible? He said, no, mother, I haven't read the Bible. She said, would you read your Bible, please? He said, all right, mother. I'll read the Bible right now. She said, well, when you do, get back to me. Okay, mother. So he went and opened up his Bible, and in the Bible was three checks to pay his rent. She'd been putting those checks in there every month. But since he wasn't reading the Bible, he didn't see them. <laughs> kind of tells us something, don't it? Mm -hmm. Read your Bible. We should be more connected, not less. We should connect with God for sure. Read that Bible. Study the Bible. Meditate on that word. Keep in touch with one another. You know, when's the last time you... I think I said this a couple of weeks ago. When's the last time you called another person? Another Christian brother or sister? And just checked on them. You need to do that. Uh, send them a text. Say, how you doing? I'm thinking about you. Because it's important for us to stay connected. We don't... We don't have to meet in a church building to stay connected. We can, we can do it through uh, FaceTime. Uh, we can do it through Zoom. We can do it through all these different mediums that we have. But I think sometimes we just become lazy. And we just kind of sit back and say, Well, you know, I really, I don't have to do anything. I don't, I don't need to do any more. Yes, you do. You need to do more, not less. Do more. Reach out more. Stay involved more. Keep in touch more. Check on one another. See how each other's doing. Care for each other. That's God's way. David was a faithful man. You know, one of the things that kind of blesses me when I read about David is the way he did with his family. He was His family was important to him. They all ate together. You know, how many times do we do that? It, that's even hard for us nowadays. You know, we can be in the same house and we're just too busy to eat together, to sit at the table. I find I'm guilty of that too. So, you can't stay connected and you can't stay involved in each other's lives if you don't Reach out and be involved. So, I'm going to read a couple of these comments here. Anybody have a, a question, please type it in there. Uh, Sister Lopez and Brother Jimmy both say amen. Uh, Sister Lopez says her churches are closed there. Um, another thing that we need to be in prayer about is the attacks that are that are happening on the churches. You know, just this past weekend, I believe it was 10 churches that were attacked in some way or another. One uh, church that I read about, the person actually drove their car into the church while people were worshiping God 
and set the building on fire while they were in there. Now, you know, that is really bold. I, I'm telling you, somebody is really bold to be doing something like that. And so we need to really be in prayer that, uh, you know, God would have his way and, and, and the churches would be protected. This is still America. And we all want God's uh, people to be protected. Amen? And we want the churches to be protected. Somebody said, well, that's not my kind of church. Let me just tell you something. It doesn't matter whether it's a mosque. It does not matter whether it's a, a synagogue. It does not matter whether it's a Catholic church or a Baptist church. If they start messing with houses of worship, they're going to mess with all of them. And this is a country where we believe in freedom of religion. So we need to pray that God protects all of the places of worship. Because ours is one of those. You know, there's no way we can say we'll protect this group of, of, of uh, churches and not those. Because most people in the world today, they don't know the difference between one church or another. They see a building. They see a steeple. Or they see some kind of a symbol on it. And to them, it's just, that's just a church. They don't know what kind it is. It's sad, but we have people that do not understand church and they have no concept of what one church is from another. So if they start attacking places of worship, they're going to attack anything, whatever happens to be there. And we don't want to see that happen in our country. Not in America. This is a place where people can worship God in the way that they choose, even if they don't worship the way we want them to. We believe they have the right and the freedom. Praise God for America. They have the right and the freedom to worship God the way they want to. And we should all support that. Because if they start telling one group to stop, they'll some days tell us to stop. So we need to support freedom of religion for all people, no matter what their religion is. That doesn't mean we can't witness. And that doesn't mean we can't share our faith. But it does mean we want everybody to have the same equal freedom. And that's another thing about the uh, movements that are going on right now. Uh, bottom line, bottom line about any, everything is that we as Christian should want everyone to be treated equally. Everyone to be treated fair. Doesn't matter whether you have money. Doesn't matter whether you don't have money. Doesn't matter whether you know big shots or don't know big shots. Everyone should be treated fair, and that needs to be our that needs to be our desire, is for everybody to be treated fair. So I I I hope you uh, feel the same way as I do that everyone should be treated fair because that that's really that's really the only uh, answer to the world that we live in, is for everybody to be treated fair. If, if we start uh, saying, well, you know, this, this one group, we need to stop them or we need to stop this person or that person, you can't control who they're going to stop. That's, that's the problem. You can't control that. And so we need to pray that our nation and our leaders will work towards the, the desire to treat everyone fairly, to treat everybody the same, to treat everybody equally. That's really all people should want, and that's all they should expect, is for us to be treated equally and fair. Well, David was a man after God's own heart. And I pray that you will be a person that will be after God's own heart too. I pray that you will seek God. I pray that you will use this time as a time for you to develop a relationship with other people. You know, uh, one of the things, let me say this about Brother Jimmy. Uh, I thank God for him. Uh, my lawnmower has been broke for a while and it just wouldn't work, wouldn't run. Couldn't get it to run. My son has finally got it running. Thank you. And Jimmy has helped to work on it. Uh, so I thank everybody that was involved. And I thank Jimmy for mowing the grass for us. 
You know, my grandson walked by the other day and he said, you know, Papa, church looks nicer with the grass mowed. <laughs> and he's right, it does. Looks kind of like nobody is here uh, when it's not mowed. So praise God for that. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I pray you'll share this with others. Uh, I pray you'll uh, find a way to support this ministry. You know, um, we have we have not uh, we have not had a lot of financial problems. Uh, we thank God for those people that are giving. But the reality is that every month the bills come due. Every month we still have to pay for the lights, the gas, the water, the electricity, for the insurance, for all the things that we normally have to do, whether we're meeting or not. Uh, even this internet, to be able to be on here now, this internet internet has to be paid. And there's uh, all kinds of technical equipment, cameras, uh, lights, everything that has to be paid or bought or paid for to, to be able to function. So pray about what God would have you give to support the work and to support the ministry. And above all, if you are a member of a church, make sure you support your church. We want to encourage you to support your church. Well, thank you for joining us. It's about that time. We're going to say a prayer now and we're going to be uh, dismissed. I pray that God will keep you the rest of this week. If you have any need uh, for prayer, please send me a prayer request. Let me know that you need me to pray with you about something. If uh, if uh, if you just want to talk to somebody and you just need some somebody to uh, to talk with, you can give me a call or send me a text, and I'll be glad to talk with you, uh, communicate with you, pray with you, encourage you, listen to you, whatever whatever you might have need of. Uh, but uh, you know, just keep connected. Keep connected. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we've had to connect with each other. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that you'll watch over us and keep us. Let the testing go well for Sister Lopez. Touch Brother Jimmy's body, Lord. Father, we pray that you'll bless everyone that hears us and that your work will go forward. Help us, Lord, to, like David, do what you've called us to do for this, our generation. In Jesus' name, amen. Till next week or Sunday at 1030, God bless you and we'll see you later, okay? <laughs>